Hello, I'm mbx 2 cat and welcome back to the second channel video. Today I have some more Geography of Toy Cat for you all. It's also a second channel series where I talk about geography and the world and stuff. And today I want to talk about part of the world that most people really don't spend too much time considering at all, but that's actually kind of really intriguing to me because it is country names. Country names are something you probably look at when you look at a map and say, oh yeah, well there's Russia and Kazakhstan and Serbia and France because those people just came up with those names and that's how that is. Simple as that. Let's move on to the next thing. But honestly, uh, you know, country names are really, really interesting because you've got to think, most country names vary from their language to English, or from their language to that language to that language, and uh, countries like Germany even have different roots in pretty much every language it goes into, so I wanted to kind of talk about some of the really weird facts when it comes to country names that you might be interested in, such as countries that have the before them, or countries that refuse to be named in English, and also a country which has changed its name very recently in English that I think uh, hopefully you'll all enjoy in some way. So uh, with that said, let's get straight into it, and let's start the very first one of those, because it is uh, the country which has changed its name most recently, but only in English. They changed their English language name for tourism reasons, I believe, uh, but their, you know, their name in uh, Czech, well, I'm, I'm giving it away, but their name in Czech is actually said the same, but they have changed, uh, you know, their official English name from the Czech Republic to Czechia, or Czechia, and uh, yeah, this means that now, uh, when you look on the map there, you can see there is Czechia instead of Czech, uh, Czech, uh, the Czech Republic. So, bear in mind, this actually happened a couple of months ago, uh, I think it was like the near the end of last year, uh, but it's only actually taking effect on Google Maps as of a week or so ago. I don't know why there's like a delay on that, but it's like when the borders change on Google Maps officially, now Czechia, no matter what map you're looking at, should now say Czech and so the Czech Republic. Is there really too much of a difference? No. Are they no longer a republic? I mean, as much as one they were before. But yeah, uh, Czechia is the most recently changed name. And again, it's really interesting because this was for tourism and, you know, just kind of making the name more worldly reasons. And I think that's really intriguing to me, the fact that a country can just change its name in English and Czechia is one of the first ones to do that. And speaking of countries which just changed their English name, certain countries really hate, you know, like any attempt to translate to English, even if they have a really easy way to do it. So there are two countries in the world which actually refuse to be named in English. I've spoken about one of them before because they're a really uh, recent country. It's uh, East Timor or because you can't say that or they won't officially recognize you, Timor Less. So Timor Less, if I'm not mistaken, uh, again, I'm going to clarify right now, I'm like 99% sure of this one, is a Portuguese name, uh, which is uh, roughly for East Timor, because there's the island of Timor, most of which belongs to Indonesia, as you can see right here, and the other half of which uh, belongs to, you know, this independent thing. Uh, there's lots of reasons the island is divided, there's religion, there's there's all these different reasons going back, uh, but they recently got their independence in uh, as, as, as recently as the last couple of decades. So yeah, that is Timor Less, uh, the, uh, one of the countries which refuses to named in English, even though there's an easy English translation, East Timor, they want to be called Timor Lest, in the same way you might be like, you know what, why do all these, um, you know, I, I, I forgot the exact name I've used, but, you know, there's loads of, like, really bad names for English, uh, the, the one in German, which I'm forgetting right now, but the, the name for the UK in German is, like, particularly, like, atrocious, you might be like, no, they should call us the UK, that's what Timor Lest did, and they refused to recognize any country that said otherwise, and it's like, okay, I guess they're Timor Lest then, one of only two countries to be called in a different languages thing, which is weird that different countries have pronunciations like that, like, it kind of makes sense to have that rule because whatever, team or less. And also, coat, uh, coat, uh, I can't pronounce, again, I, I, let me just, let's just all pr admit right now I'm horrible at pronunciation, but the Ivory Coast, as you might hear it called, but officially it has to be Coat de, de Ivory, which is the Ivory Coast, but in French, uh, is a French, uh, you know, pr former, you know, French colony, I should say, uh, that turned into their own independent country. And when they did that, uh, you know, they were called, you know, Ivory Coast by a lot of people and sometimes Coat de Ivory. So to put that to rest in the 80s, they will, uh, you know, again, they did the same thing where it's like, nope, you call us in in English, you, you call us in French, you know, our, our, our name, or you don't call us at all, which means in, uh, you know, these two countries are really unique because they have the same name in our, every single language, which is really, really intriguing. So yeah, Cote, uh, Cote Ivory, I, 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 I'm bad at pronunciation, uh, is this country right here. Uh, the second country, and one of only two, which insist on, uh, you know, not using their English names. And speaking of uh, countries about an English names, because again, when you look at a map, these are the English names for the countries. If you're, you know, in an English speaking country, this is Germany, but in German, it's Deutschland. Uh, this is is uh, Japan, but in uh, Japanese it's Nippon, and you know very different. Uh, again, probably something something butcher pronunciation. But loads of countries have their uh, you know their name be slightly different in their own language. And uh, th the really interesting thing about this is certain uh, certain countries when they convert to the English language insist on the being used because uh, so if you okay and if we go back to uh, you know like uh, if we go to Japan you can't call it the Japan right you can't call it you know the France or the Germany but some countries you can kind of use the in the name so there's the Neverland ne Neverland even though officially it's just Netherlands. There is uh, United Kingdom, or the United Kingdom. Uh, another one would be uh, United States. 
loads of countries like that have the as like an optional thing you can do. There's uh, Ukraine, but you shouldn't call them the Ukraine, even though a lot of people do because it implies they're a territory and not a country. Fun fact, by the way, if you ever visit. But yeah, uh, so there's lots of countries like that where you can use the, but there are two countries where you have to use the. It's a part of their name. And uh, the reason for this is kind of interesting because in the Bahamas case, it's just they were always called the Bahamas. So they're an ex-British uh, colony. I, I'm terrified because I'm worried I can't find it on a map now. There we go. There's the Bahamas, ex-British, uh, you know, colony uh, thingamajig, and uh, eventually turned it to own country. It was always called the Bahamas, so they're one of the few countries that were like, yeah, let's make our official name the Bahamas. But the one I find really interesting is Gambia. So Gambia, or the Gambia, which is the country that looks kind of like a colon, you might have spotted it. They had a lot of uh, political turmoil recently. Uh, this is how it came off my mind, actually, uh, because the Gambia, uh, they had a really terrible, like, struggle of power recently. It's all good now. As, as of making this video, uh, but yeah, hopefully that stays that way. Uh, but yeah, so uh, the Gambia's all good now, but was kind of terrifying, and the reason uh, that was kind of interesting is because that's when their name came up one more time, because they're one of just two countries which have the in the name, and their reason is one that just makes me go, ah, I guess that's kind of that. So why is the Gambia called the Gambia? And it's for two reasons. First of all, because they've got a river, which is the River Gambi, or Gambi, you know, that, that's what the na their name is after. So, you know, they, they're a big, un unlike, uh, but un unlike, sorry. Unlike other countries, uh, which are named after a river, so, you know, Niger or Nigeria, etc., uh, they, they often didn't actually call the country as a country, they just called it as the lands near the river, such as, you know, they called it the Gambia and its surrounding areas. Uh, so when they became their own country, that was part of the reason, but the other part of the reason was to do with the British, you know, foreign office or whatever, because they wanted to make sure that another territory, which was going independent, didn't get confused with it, because Zambia, which is on the other side of the continent, was also going independent at the same time, and so the two countries didn't get confused, they figured, aha, this is how we can definitely make them be very different, because that's Zambia, and this is the Gambia, and apparently that's the official reasoning, you know, those two reasons together, meant that the Gambia became the Gambia instead of just Gambia, and that is why on the pla that is why we have two countries which have to use the, two countries where you can't use the English words, and also you have a, a brand new country with a brand new exclusive for English name, which uh, changed on Google Maps within just a week. So, yeah, hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, there's so many more things I'd love to talk about when it comes to countries and names, and I'd recommend you look into it if you're curious. Uh, Germany, for instance, I mentioned earlier. They So, m loads of countries, you can kind of see the English, you know, spelling as being somewhat similar to theirs. So, Japan and Nippon, there's actually a link there. You can see, like, Japan, Nippon. Uh, there's a there's a few steps involved, but that's how it kind of happened. Uh, you know, you can look at France, Frances, etc. You can be like, oh, yeah, these all fi these things all make sense. However, Germany, uh, because it's so it's been so many different lands of over time, you know, sometimes it included Austria, sometimes it included um, uh, Bavaria, you know, there's all these different states that kind of just combined somewhat recently, because, uh, you know, it's been so many different names in so many different places, it has different language roots on every, like, corner of Europe, so for instance, uh, like I said earlier, um, in, in the UK, we call it Germany, and in, in any English-speaking language, it's Germany, in German, it's Deutschland, or I, again, pronouncing that wrong, but in French, it's Alemane, and when you go into certain Eastern European languages, you get something entirely different instead, and that's something I find rather interesting. Also, something I find interesting is the Bahamas, should have mentioned this, coolest thing about the country you don't know is that they have flow, they have pigs that like, wait, there's a better picture, um, they have pigs that can swim, and it's the only place in the world where that's true, so if you are going to go somewhere, and you're willing to spend a lot more money, go to the Bahamas, because it's got the in the name, and they've got swimming pigs, so I hope you all enjoyed this video, uh, and I guess I'll see you all in the next one. I don't know when that'll be, but shrug my shoulders, uh, buy my t-shirts. Goodbye. <laughs> That's how you should end a video. F9.